what you're looking at in front of you is the new Epicor 10 home screen. And it's definitely a departure from what you're used to from the Vantage days or the Epicor 9 days in the fact that you don't see your standard menu here anymore. You can still get to it, you can still operate in that same mode, um, and you do have a classic view option that you can load into that'll actually bring the screen up and it'll look just like Epicor 9. Um, you can still navigate and work your way through Epicor 10 basically in the same exact fashion. To do so, you just jump into the menu item here, and that's gonna be a standard tile that'll be there in front of you. And you'll notice everything is now in a very nice touch-friendly format. So I still have sales management. I still can get into my case management or my order management. And I still have my different small tiles over here to be able to see and operate everything as I'm used to. So in Epicor 10, the main objective of this uplift was really a technology uplift to eliminate that progress layer that basically sat as a middle layer in between. So when we look at Epicor 10 now, the footprint that it leaves on top of a server is much, much less, um, which means it basically can run on a whole lot less hardware than what it required on an Epicor 9 version. And for anybody that ran an Epicor 904, you definitely know what I'm talking about there because that, that required a lot of horsepower to get through some of the, the memory leaks and everything else with that software at that time. Um, but being able to get that onto a smaller platform and be able to operate and uh, everything's been leveled out to where it's 100% Microsoft stack. So there's no additional third-party applications, no other database layers, no other logic layers. It's all contained into that .NET, C Sharp, and SQL. Um, so it's, it's much more efficient of a program. <clears throat> and the performance that we're seeing out of it, um, at least in our uh, companies, we're implementing a couple of Epicor 10 clients now. Uh, Performance-wise is, is a vast improvement. So today you may see a little bit of some slowdowns, and what we're noticing with that is it has much more to do with internet connectivity than it does the actual system itself. So I'm hailing from Central Florida area on the, the Gulf Coast, and our server is sitting up in Estes Park, Colorado <clears throat> at over 7,000 feet with uh, not the best internet connectivity between my house and, and that location. So. We occasionally do see a little bit of a slowdown um, when those situations arise. But I have my, my navigation here where I have the touch friendly, and I have a couple of features over here as well that I do want to point out to you guys. Number one is I can click this button for tree view, and it brings it right back to the old standard menu that you may be used to with a legacy product of Epicor. So I still see from my Epicor nine days, my multiple companies that I can get into, simply by clicking and navigating through, and I can pick then my multiple plants and be able to select exactly which site and location that I do want to be inside of and doing my operating procedures with them. So once I'm in here, it will expand out and show me what then my operational menu set is for what it is that I may want to be able to do within that particular environment. Um, if I click back to this, you'll notice that I don't see that type of a navigational tree, but I do have that called out up here. So if I do click on that, it does pull it open to where I can then select exactly which company and which location that I want to be uh, uh, functioning in at this point in time. So I've got multiple avenues for being able to um, actually select and choose and operate within which feature set that I need to. Um, but I can go back, like I said, to that classic menu view, and I can also uh, change my tile view now to something that's more touch-friendly if I wish. So <clears throat> what we're noticing with this is when you run this through Terminal Server, you can run this thing and deploy it through Citrix, Terminal Server applications, um, just about any type of deployment that you may want now. And that means that you can operate this on just about any touch-friendly platform. So if you think about the new tablets um, that are out, um, meaning the, the, the tablet computers or laptops where they actually have the touch screen interfaces, those types of things, very, very friendly and intuitive for somebody to be able to come in and navigate uh, using their fingers and being able to move around in that regard. So really nice kind of uh, features that Epicor has added. Um, for today's demonstration purposes, I am going to back this up to what the classic view is simply because that's what I think most people are, are very much accustomed and used to. So going in, I'm gonna show a couple other uh, nice navigational features that are available in the Epicor 10 product. 
a um, couple of those, again, if you do have a remote deployment methodology that you have at your company, or if that's something that you're interested in, Epicor 9 in the way that you could navigate between programs, especially if you were running that as a virtualized application, wasn't very friendly. And what I mean by that is when that application's up, if I wanted to be able to switch between multiple applications and I didn't have access to that computer's taskbar, it made it very difficult. Windows got buried behind one another, and we had other issues that may have arised with that. So in this particular case with the new Epicor 10, I can actually come up here and just pull down that top panel, and I can now navigate back between any open windows that I happen to have for Epicor 10 at the moment. So if I want to go back to my home screen and check on something, I certainly can. So really nice features as far as how Epicor 10 operates. Now, if I want to get back to case entry, I can come here and click on it, and it will automatically then bring that window into focus for me. So <clears throat> nice functions, nice features. But as I get into the actual application itself, for those that are concerned about upgrading, the business processes really haven't changed. So there's only been two sections of, or I should say three sections of the Epicor 10 application that had to have an overwrite to them or a rewrite to them. That's product configurator, the BPM engine or BAM engine, and then the uh, BAQ query statements. The BPMs and, and product configurator both had deep nested roots with 4GL language in the prior versions of Epicor. With that whole layer being removed, it had to be rewritten into C Sharp. So if you do have configurator um, or some extensive automation through BPMs and those types of things that are written into your environment, those will be of major concern or, or major focal point to be watching and looking at and, and focusing your efforts on as you upgrade into an Epicor 10 product. So those are a couple things that, you know, definitely if you're, you're looking at that, highlight those right up to the top of your list because those are going to be the areas that you'll have the most risk as you move forward. Uh, the BAQs, they simply did some enhancements to that. You can still operate and function much in the same way. And if you use the wizard to be able to build your queries from before, those are very upgrade friendly. We found those to be um, uh, very simple. They run through the process and they've been able to come in. If you did custom querying where you wrote your own scripts and language, those are the other ones that are suspect because now the, the background language behind the new queries is, um, is SQL, um, so the SQL querying process that's there. So once we have the case entry or whatever else up and we want to be able to navigate back and forth between, we have that functionality up here at the top. Down below, they've also added some additional features. So if you're, um, you know, used to the old workstations and those types of things, changing language, changing users, um, or entering into developer mode, all those things that used to be visible to us at the menu up in the file tabs, those are what are now down here and available. And then as well, one of the nicest features that, um, that Epicor has added with this with the home screen is the ability now to create and uh, modify custom tiles. So all of these tiles, I can put whatever it is that I may want out there. So I can actually create different colored tiles that may represent, you know, red for financial, green for production, uh, blue for CRM. And that way I can group my tiles together by color um, and be able to very quickly and visually see what's going on. And then I can deploy my BAQs or I can deploy dashboards, including graphical representations inside of these tiles. So if you can envision that as you would come in, you'd be able to have your home screen with a tile list up here. And one of those tiles, if I'm like a purchasing approver, maybe all my pending approvals of which I can expand and click on and be able to go right into that and see what my list is and be able to do my approvals. So I can navigate and drill in to exactly what I need to focus on extremely quickly just because all of that information is right here on my tiles. And because these tiles are the way that they are, we can expand on those tiles. So if you look here, I just have a, a basic block to be able to represent this. I can expand and collapse. So if I know I have a report that's going to show a lot of information and I want to just be able to put the primary snippet of interest into the prime real estate, I can set this as a two by two block, but then I can tell it that I want that to expand to like a, 
a four by six or a three by six or a three by five in this particular case. And then this would display all of that relevant information um, that I may be looking for so that I can see everything without necessarily having to actually click on it and open up that dashboard or query or any of those types of results. And then as well, um, for many folks, they didn't realize in the prior versions you could do this, but um, just like how you could display dashboards or websites or anything else, you can actually use your tiles to display those pieces of information as well. So in this particular case here, this is the Estes Group homepage, and I'm actually out on the website, and, um, and it's able to display that right here inside of our uh, Epicor 10 home screen. Okay. Thank you, Jesse, for your time. I know you got to take off. Um, then as well, you can uh, also have my social in here. And Epicor Social is a core feature now that's new with Epicor 10. And this is something that basically replaces enterprise search and, uh, and then more. So what Epicor Social basically provides to us is a stream of messaging that you can have in and around different topics, notifications, or anything else that may be relevant to what you do for your job. So if you think about as a, let's just say, a customer service representative, and I know I sold particular parts or products to, you know, customer XYZ, and they're a prime customer for me, and I want to monitor all of their transactions to make sure I'm on top of things. So I can actually monitor a sales order that may be manufactured or order for a specific part, and as that goes through the production process, any and all transactions that hit it, I'm able to monitor that. And if anything happens to it, I can actually go through and then reply messages back to either that specific transaction such as we're seeing um, right here. Um, I think I paged down a little too far. Yep, right there. So there's one against this particular job number. You need to rework this widget. We've got cons uh, uh, Operation Consultant group that's been built in, so we can actually communicate back and forth between groups. So just like in Facebook, how you can post group messages um, and those types of activities. So we get real-time notification right here within our screen. But then at the same time, I can have this open over here on a website, which means I can have this on my iPhone, my iPad, or anywhere I'm at, as long as it's exposed, and I can see all of that relevant information out there and available. So here's an example of job 05367-1-1. Uh, I can go in and I can look at the details of this, and it's going to um, show me basically everything that I want to know about what's going on, what's the part number, what's required by, is it engineered release, what's happening with it. Are there any related messages to it? I can actually open with and see um, see other activities. I can tell it to open with something in my Epicor 10 application. Um, or as well, I can post a message back to this, and I can say that I want it to go just to my followers, my colleagues, or I've got a, a you know a customer based team here, or uh, different groups, and I can post back to this and insert links, um, you know, so I can actually have. Uh, a posted picture of a file. So think about a QC guy that needs to be able to post a picture of damaged product and what the damages are and be able to have an engineering team be able to follow that information in real time see that pop up on his message screen to know exactly what's going on and be able to follow that all the way through utilizing this social tool. And like I said, all of that's embedded and I'm able to go in and create different notifications. So I can see and, and search for different records. So if I wanted uh, to pull up a particular customer, I just have to have that highlighted on my data records. And you can flip that back and forth between notification profiles as well. And once you have your data rules and everything set, you can use this then as your enterprise search. And it will go back out and it will start to pull information from whatever um, data source you have this tied to. So here it's actually pulling back the customer and different contacts and everything else. So if I have anything specific I want to watch, I can pull that information through and see that stuff real time. So very quick and easy way to get right into the source of information that may be important to me in the business um, to be able to follow and respond and react to very, very quickly. So as we look at an Epicor 10 and being able to navigate through the processes and everything else that that are there for us. You can see that the UI has certainly been uplifted. The performance of the system has gotten vastly better um, by eliminating that, that progress layer that's sitting there in between. 
um, we're cutting out that middleman. And anytime you can get rid of the middleman, you just increase efficiencies, which is exactly what we're seeing with the, the requirements on the servers themselves um, and the performance in which it can return uh, volumes of transactions back to the user. So we're seeing great, great performance as far as that's concerned. From a quality of release standpoint, I know Epicor has not had the best track record as far as that's concerned. Um, and I've been the biggest pessimist of that all through my career as I worked at Epicor for a long time. I was a customer of Epicor before that and now on the partner panel. Um, I'm actually excited about this release and it's, it's doing really well and we're not running into, um, you know, a lot of issues with our customers that are currently implementing this. So, we're seeing the benefits outweigh any of the problems that we've run into with the, to date. So it's been fantastic. Um, so we are seeing some good things as far as that's concerned. Uh, the workflow has definitely improved as far as the ability to be able to use that. And then as well, a little snippet of what um, what's gonna come out next time. You can actually see here that this is just running in a browser. And this is a full-blown version of Epicor 10, and I can get in here and be able to work with everything in a touch-friendly manner. So think about the avenues of opportunity that that can open up to any business to now be able to bring your own device, be able to open that item up, and be able to operate Epicor from anywhere that you're at as long as you have web connectivity. Um, so true, true services are, are out there and being brought to us here with, with the new Epicor 10 product.